chapter 13 is about the progressive era and the progressive movement, which is a response to all the negative aspects that things like industrialization and urbanization brought. So that's what we'll be learning about in chapter 13. So first of all, when you think about what the progressive movement stood for, you think about the term progressivism. And the root word with being progressive is, of course, progress. Progress means to move forward or change. To be progressive is to take action. And so progressivism is essentially to take action, to change something. And so the reason we titled this era, progressive era, the, pro or the progressivism, is this is America making efforts to improve people's circumstances as a result of industrialization and urbanization. So to give you an official definition for what the progressive movement was, which there might not be a bullet for this on your outline, but you can go ahead and write it down anyway underneath um, the origins of progressivism, what is the progressive movement. The progressive movement is a movement in the early 20th century which was aimed at correcting social injustice, reforming government, and restoring economic opportunities for all Americans. So those are the kinds of the three things it sought out to do, but we're actually going to go through four specific goals of the progressive movement. The first goal that we're going to talk about is focusing on social welfare, which you can you should consider welfare as the well-being of individuals. Um, basically, progressive reformers really want to soften some of the harsh conditions that urbanization brought about. Um, and so really just trying to improve the roughness in people's lives because it's just a very hard time to live and survive during the turn of the century. It's a very harsh life, a very um, difficult one economically, and most families are um, living in kind of poorer circumstances with all the kids even holding jobs. So, for example, we're going to see things develop and get pushed through during this time to answer that social welfare um, issue. For example, the YMCA will be formed. Um, you all know what the YMCA is um, today. It's like a little gym um, for families. There are several around Baton Rouge, but you know, initially YMCA opens up libraries, classes, swimming pools, um, basketball courts, and playgrounds for kids to kind of have a recreational life. And we're also going to see organizations such as the Salvation Army be created, and the Salvation Army would um, open soup kitchens to feed um, impoverished people. It would care for children in nurseries. It would also collect gifts and resources during Christmas time. They still do that today. You may notice the Santa outside the mall during Christmas ringing the bell. And so that's the first goal of the progressive era and the progressive movement is to protect social welfare. The second goal we'll talk about is promoting moral improvement. Some reformers felt that morality, um, not necessarily the workplace, but morality held the key to improve people's lives. Um, basically that if people were making good behavioral decisions, then they would be personally uplifting themselves. So this is the first time we're going to see the suggestion of prohibition come to exist. And you all know prohibition is the time period that alcohol was a banned substance in our nation. Um, prohibition won't actually pass just yet, but it's starting, it's starting to be advocated for at this time. We're going to see women specifically, um, you know, uh, pushing for prohibition because they kind of blame alcohol for some of their husbands, poor behavior on the weekends, and one group in particular, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, 
um, or the WCTU became a very large group that did advocate for prohibition during the um, late uh, 1800s and one of the main leaders is actually pictured on the screen but if you want to google her she's worth a google um, her name is Carrie Nation uh, and if you google her image and you see she's holding something in many pictures she's actually holding a hatchet because she is well known for storming into saloons and scolding customers who are partaking in drinking in these bars and just using her little hatchet to destroy um, bottles of liquor which is a bit aggressive but it uh, kinda comical looking back on it today the third goal is probably the main goal and the goal that we will talk the most about in this chapter and that's creating economic reform because this is going to focus on a variety of sectors in the economy progressives saw I'm saying progressives like plural that refers to people who were part of this movement progressives saw problems in the workforce and they aimed um, at reform to solve some of these issues um, for example there were corrupt practices in certain industries because of the robber barons and people like Rockefeller who were taking advantage of their employees um, we're gonna see a group of people attempt to expose the corruption within some of these industries and those individuals are given a name called muckrakers and the way you spell muckraker is M U C K R A K E R S muckraker M U C K R A K E R S muckrakers were journalists who intended to expose the corrupt side of business and industry in hopes to bring about reform in society basically if people know how bad things are then they'll push for change and so we're gonna write about it so we can tell people how bad things are and so we have a couple of examples of some muckrakers that pushed for change and reform in the workplace um, the first you see the book on the left called the jungle and the jungle was written by Upton Sinclair and the jungle itself focuses on the unsanitary conditions in the meatpacking industry so that's pretty gross um, and it was a very popular book during this time gains a lot of traction um, now Ida Tarbell pictured on the right is actually the author of a book called a history of the standard oil company which does sound um, somewhat uh, light-hearted and just maybe a little bibliography not a, bi a biography of sorts but um, truthfully uh, she's trying to expose the corrupt practices of Rockefeller as that's his oil company the name of his oil company was Standard Oil um, and so people get pretty heated when they learn about some of the corrupt actions that Rockefeller carried out so both of these books helped to bring about government intervention in the industry sector. Um, per this goal, you know, progressives also aimed to reform the injustice in the labor system itself with things like child labor and just people working for long hours. The fourth and final goal of the progressive movement was fostering efficiency. Progressive leaders put their faith in science to make society and the workplace more efficient, thus improving people's lives. And essentially it's about trying to save, save people time and energy by breaking things down into assembly lines and task oriented systems and this just makes production faster overall and it lessens the work hours for the average American so people developing these types of systems that made people's jobs in the workplace a little more easier 
All right. Now this is separate from goals, but just something that actually comes into play. Um, and there's we're not going to talk about all of these, but we're going to talk about a couple of ways in which um, we have the government kind of cleaned up and just Americans wanting to hold the government a little more accountable. Okay. Um, the main thing I actually want us to be aware of is that people are going to start questioning their government and holding government to um, a higher standard. Some of these terms here, and it's really going to be the 17th Amendment that I want us to know for the test, so if you only want to actually write that one down, it's fine, but just so you know what some of these other terms are. Um, initiatives were when bills in Congress were created by citizens directly rather than congressmen, and then a referendum would be a public vote on written down initiatives. Now we've had recalls even in um, Louisiana recently. So why don't we write this one down as well, actually. Recall is when voters could vote to remove public officials from office by forcing them to face another election before their term um, was, was over. So basically, if enough people vote in favor of a recall, that means they will hold another election to decide whether or not you'd be able to um, continue out your term in office. This really makes uh, America a true democracy, holding, you know, people having a voice and getting to exercise their voice. Now, the 17th Amendment is something I want you to know because the 17th Amendment provides for the direct election of senators. Um, before this, citizens were not given the right to vote for their senators, only their representatives. So this helps um, make America more of a democracy. Now, in terms of reform at state level, I just want you to know that states are going to work to really directly address child labor issues. Um, factories did like to hire children because they would work for much lower wages and it was also easy for them to use their hands in the factories, smaller hands, smaller fingers could um, eat more easily com complete certain tasks and you know lots of children had to w go to work because their family needed the money. but. Um, reformers will work to protect children and eventually eliminate child labor altogether. Well, I mean, what you see in these pictures is absolutely depressing <laughs> to think about children at this young age holding jobs rather than having fun and enjoying their, themselves in an innocent way. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about Teddy Roosevelt in this screencast, and then I have a follow-up screencast for y'all to... Um, take a couple more notes about him on, but you're not going to have to watch very much of that one because the rest of it I'm going to cover in class on Monday. Um, this is one of my favorite presidents. As pictured on the screen, you kind of recognize that he looks like the character from Night at the Museum. And this is President Theodore Teddy, nicknamed Teddy Roosevelt. Um, he is portrayed by Robin Williams in Night at the Museum on the horse. Um, Roosevelt was from New York. Uh, we'll talk more about this in Unit 5, but he gained national attention when he fought in the Spanish-American War as, as a volunteer um, member of the Calvary. And he will later on go um, become New York's governor. And from there, he will um, actually serve as vice president under President William McKinley. And McKinley will actually be assassinated shortly into office, just a couple of months into his elect uh, into his inauguration. So. Theodore Roosevelt will take up and finish the rest of McKinley's term. 
Now, Theodore Roosevelt was a very modern president, probably a little more aggressive and just boisterous, really, than the presidents that had served before him. Um, he was very bold in his politics. He believed that the federal government should assume, really, the responsibility for the nation's welfare whenever states couldn't handle it themselves. It was, it was the you know, federal government's responsibility to provide relief for the people. Um, he considered the president, presidency what we call a bully pulpit. When you think about a pulpit, you think about like a stand that presidents or that leaders stand behind to give a speech or a sermon. Um, but in this way, he's referencing a bully pulpit that he would basically stand behind um, his title as president and use it to shape legislation, influence the public, influence the media and um, really stand up for people um, and so he's going to do that. One thing he's very well known for is trust busting. Now he basically wants to stop the monopolies and stop the trusts. Um, much like the Sherman Antitrust Act aimed to do. Now you know, the Sherman Antitrust Act did make trust illegal, but it was just, it was very hard to um, enforce. And Roosevelt is going to help to enforce it by filing several different antitrust suits and breaking up many different trusts during his time as president, but there still needs to be some revisions to the law to make it super efficient and effective, but he does take good efforts in this direction to um, eliminate the corruptions within business. The last thing we'll talk about is his role in health and the environment. Um, mainly we'll talk about health first. So in terms of regulating food and drugs, let's just say that Teddy Roosevelt read The Jungle and he was very disturbed by it. So he is definitely going to um, push for some uh, reform within food regulation. He has the Meat Inspection Act passed, which dictated strict cleanliness requirements for meat packers and created the, fe the program of federal meat inspection that is actually used until the late 1900s and is now replaced with a more efficient system. But even today, meat is graded on a scale, A through F, and this did not actually happen until Teddy Roosevelt pushed that through. And he's also going to see that the Pure Food and Drug Act is passed through. And this is going to halt the sale of any kind of contaminated food and medicine. And it's also going to call for labeling on both food and drugs so people know the true information about what is in their food and medicine and they would be able to be, make more informed decisions um, about what they are consuming. And I tell you what, we're actually going to end the screencast here, so don't, don't worry about the second screencast. Even though there's one more note about Roosevelt, I'll just go ahead and save that for Monday. I'll have a good night, um, a good weekend, and if you'll have any questions, please write them down and ask me on Monday when we review for our test. Okay, we're only going to take a few more notes at the beginning of class Monday and then we'll spend the rest of the, day, the time reviewing.